What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp. Welcome to Fightful. Here with a name you know. How could you not at this point? Huge match this weekend. AEW All Out in Chicago. Daniel Garcia takes on MJF. Daniel Garcia, how you doing, man? Man, I've been doing better. I got a glass bottle shattered on my forehead last night. You did? How, how you think I feel? Probably not good, mm. physically. You'd be correct. <laughs> emotionally mentally how do you feel knowing that you get to do uh something that you you probably want to do really bad this weekend yeah i mean there is no better fuel in the world than hatred and that's exactly what i feel going into the saturday i i hate mjf i cannot stand to look at him i can't stand to hear about him i can't stand to see his name pop up on my phone on twitter or instagram or any social media device at all i cannot stand the thought of him and i cannot wait to get my hands on him when you said phone i was like is this man calling you like is he calling you on the phone i, I wouldn't i would not be surprised yeah fair fair uh well i mean man this this is like such a highly anticipated match and you're the moment at all in when you came back yeah, I, it's wild because you are you're such a phenomenal in ring wrestler, and like just pulling off a mask gets like such an insane reaction for you because the people have invested in you from being that incredible in ring performer to being a sports entertainer to what we saw unfold. How did that feel for you to to hear Wembley blow up when you just showed up and was like, "It's me." I mean, it feels like a weight lifted off your shoulders. You're sitting at home for six, seven weeks. You're nervous. You're watching the show every week. Do people remember me? Are people going to remember who I am? Do people care? Am I who I think I am? And then you go out there and you take a mask off and, you know, get one of the loudest reactions of the night. And it feels like a weight lift off your shoulders. It feels amazing. It felt like a huge release of energy from 50,000 people. And, you know, it, it was a great moment that I'll remember forever. So I had heard that you were, you were there throughout the day in the mask. And a couple of people were like, I didn't even know it was him. How'd you hear that? Uh, I just I just heard people, people talking. And they're like, mm. they're like, yeah, he was very uh he was very uh secretive throughout the day. Like a lot of people had no idea it was you and you popped up. It's it's a phenomenal surprise, like 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 to see that. But we have also seen subsequently you put in the pain on MJF. The microphone got a lot of buzz as well. How often have you thrown a microphone in your life? It was my first time and I threw a dot. <laughs> I threw it was right at that man's head. I had one That's shot. A I, was, I, had, I had one shot. I wasn't going to miss it. That's a 99 accuracy on the next game right there. 100%. Like, how, how do you feel when you see that? And you're like, one shot. Here we go. I mean, that's just something, obviously, I didn't go out there thinking, oh, I'm going to spike this microphone off MJF's head. I just see him and I see his makeup wearing fake tan acne ridden face and it just makes me so mad i'm gonna throw this whatever's in my hand i'm gonna bounce it off of his head as hard as i can and that's what i try to do i think i missed a little bit i think i hit him in the shoulder not the head but a quarter inch the other way he might have lost a couple of teeth or broken nose might be an improvement on his face too i feel like it did the job though i mean made a great sound got the point across got a, got a great reaction uh, i mean a friend of mine, John Alba, I remember uh, before you had got signed by AEW, he's like, you got to watch Daniel Garcia. And I remember uh, watching matches that you had with J.D. Drake, Wheeler Yuta. What is it like to see guys like that who you were tearing it up with before AEW in AEW also? Like, it, it had to be, or I wonder, I shouldn't say it had to be, like a situation where you know, all these guys you're in the ring with and they know the same about you that they're probably going to see you down the road as well. I mean, it feels deserved. I feel like, you know, those people were working just as hard as me. They're busting their butts just as hard as I am. And I feel like, you know, they got there before I did. And I, I, I saw them like JD and Yuta were both in AEW before me. And I knew if I kept going on the pace that I was at, I was like, I'm going to be right there with them. A hundred percent. You know, it's funny how it works out. Now we're all there together. And, you know, we talk about those times when we were wrestling in front of, you know, me and JD wrestled in front of literally nobody during the pandemic. We drove to Maine to wrestle in front of, like, just other wrestlers. So it's pretty surreal to, like, I just wrestled him in, I think, Palm Springs tagging with Shibata, you know, a couple months ago. So 
to go from wrestling him in a pandemic in front of just other wrestlers to doing that in an arena is is a crazy feeling. We all we always hear about the Buffalo Boys, and there there's this like groundswell of talent that emerges from there. And when I would talk to people from Cleveland who have like a similar like groundswell of wrestlers, they're like, weather's cold. Sometimes the sports teams aren't fun. You got to be tough to live there. What do you think it is about Buffalo that creates so many like really, really good wrestlers? I mean, I, I think you just said it. I think, uh, you know, Buffalo, it's it's a tough city to be in. It's uh, <laughs> it, 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 I, I think that's the thing about these cities that are cold and there's not a lot going on. It's, you know, you have to have something to look forward to. That's why we go so hard for the sports teams, even when they stink. And why we go so hard for random things. That's why, like, whenever wrestling comes to Buffalo, like, it always does really well because people are just looking for something to do and they're looking for a distraction. And I feel like that's what sports and wrestling is for people in cities like Buffalo, where it's like, you know, we need something to root for. We need something to keep our minds off the cold. We need something to entertain us. Like, why not? Why not wrestling? Why not the Bills, even though they lost 13 games this year? You know? Yeah. Well, hopefully they lose 13 games this year. That would that would make things a lot easier for my life. But but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, like we were talked about the MJF stuff. We've talked about people you've ran into in the past. Big part of your past was wrestler versus sports entertainer. Uh, do you view yourself as one or the other, or did your time in the Jericho Appreciation Society like truly open you up and be like, maybe I'm just both? No, I think that the best performers of all time are both. I mean, look at yeah. Brian Danielson, Eddie Guerrero, um, all the best people of all time can do both. And I, I feel like that's what I'm aiming towards. I'm somebody who, you know, I don't want to be put in a box and I don't want to be limited to just one thing or the other. I want to be I want to be versatile and I want to be unique. And like I said, I don't want to limit myself. I think limiting yourself is is foolish. And I feel like that's something I never want to do to myself. I, I want to be, I want to be the best version of myself. And I think the best version of myself is a combination of a pro wrestling and sports entertainment. What is your favorite Daniel Garcia meme that you've seen? You've had some memeable moments. Like you're, you're good with that. Man, the, 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 well, I am two one that, that got some good, uh, <laughs> That that got some good uh some good stuff out of that. I feel like that like transcended past wrestling Twitter. Yeah, that, that like, went on to like real, like real life Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Real life Twitter is real life. <laughs> but um, that one, the one of me next to the TV doing this is a good one. Oh yeah, we use that one a lot. Man, I got um, I got hit with uh one of those yesterday. Favorite? I got hit with one of those yesterday. Mojo did a pounce to me, and somebody like put you in front of me as I'm selling. I was like ah. Oh. Come on, come what's on. Your favorite, what's your favorite? I think I'd, I'd have to go with that one. Yeah. would have to go with that one. The classic. It's the classic. And I mean, that wrestling has that very, very unique ability to where, like, if you can find the camera, oh my God. And you're you're so good at doing that as well. Was that something that you, you picked up once you started doing more TV wrestling? Or was that something that was a little more natural to you? I mean, I think it's something that's natural to you. It's it's pretty easy to find a camera. Somebody has a big <laughs> sixty pound thing on their shoulder, pointing it right in front of your face. I feel like you know it's kind of hard to miss. Um, but I, but I do think it's something that I have worked on, and I think something that I have gotten better at as I've been at AEW. Because um, you just kind of are forced to. You watch your stuff back, and you think, man, I could have done better looking at the camera there, there, there. And then you just apply it to your next match, and hopefully you do better than the last time. Was there a point where it just kind of hit you and I'm you're like, I'm good at this shit. Just like, I'm really good at this. Like, I'm capable of things that a lot of people aren't capable of. And like, this this is it. This is who I am. I mean, you kind of have those moments. I think like every couple, maybe like once a year, every two years. But then the thing is, a year or two after that, you look back at that time, you're like, man, I stunk. Like, I really didn't I really didn't know anything. So it's like a constant evolution and a constant uh you know learning curve and a learning process because two years ago when I thought I was good, I look at myself two years ago and I'm like, man, you stunk. But like and I'm but I'm sure I think I'm good now. I'll look at myself two years from now and be like, man, like you really weren't as good as you thought you were. So it's just a constant evolution. And I think I think that's the key to greatness in, in any avenue of anything is to, you know, keep learning and never settle and think that you're 
just never just think that you're the best. Just always keep trying to get better and always keep trying to improve and you will. One of the things I really liked about your run up to the international title match was like some of the shorter matches you were having, you'd have them with what we call sirloin beef sons of bitches, some really big dudes. And that, you know, it's one thing to be in there with somebody near your size or even smaller and stuff in these shorter matches, but you didn't see a lot of that in wrestling. Like really, I don't think a lot before AEW and you're seeing Daniel Garcia show what he's capable of against guys that are, you know, like Nick Comoroto and, and KM even like how, what kind of a different approach do you have to that? Cause obviously there won't be a lot of time in the match, but everybody loves seeing somebody do their cool stuff. Yeah. I think that the best wrestlers of all time are versatile and they can adapt their style to any situation. I think that's what Bret Hart does. That's what Brian Danielson does. Um, and that's what I try to do. I feel like if you have a set thing that you do all the time, you just have one way of doing something. I feel like the second that you're throwing a curveball, it's going to throw you off your game. But if you're malleable and you're versatile, I think that, you know, nothing can really throw you off. You can put me in there with a six foot six, 280 pound guy, and I'm going to be just as comfortable as I would if somebody my size or smaller. And I think that just goes to show you like the power of versatility and the power of really knowing yourself as a performer. I always look back at Bret Hart and like little things like his second rope elbow. I saw that and I was like, that's his. Nobody else does it like him. Mm -hmm. What do you think is like sort of your technique like that? Is there a particular move where you're like, I don't know if anybody quite does it like me. Not not saying it's like better or worse or anything. Just you feel like you put that specific flair on it and you could point it out if it was a silhouette and be like, that's a Daniel Garcia technique. So that's something I think about a lot in wrestling, but I really don't know if I have that or have found that. Okay. Um, you know, I, I feel like I feel like all of my stuff is pretty uh like I'm not the most athletic guy, I'm not <laughs> the most I'm not the fastest or the strongest, or you know, I feel like all my stuff is pretty replicable. Um, I but I think that my power and my superpower in wrestling is the way I piece it together. Yeah, and yeah. The, the, the way I'm able to blend all those things together, I, I think that's my superpower. I feel like you, you would be better off being able to hear, like if somebody like wrote a play-by-play -play of a match, I feel like you'd be able to tell if it was a Daniel Garcia match. You know what I'm I saying? I love that. Yeah. Like if, if somebody wrote exactly like move for move, everything I did in a match, I feel like you'd be able to tell it was a match. I mean, if if it were come, if it came down to a silhouette, it might be the dance, which is not easy I mean, yeah, to popularize. Sure. Yeah, how does it make you feel when you see people like Mina Shirakawa doing that and going viral with it? Like, I mean, like Mina is somebody who it, she can do it better than me. I, I feel like <laughs> she can have it now. Like, she she got it. She got it. I mean, I saw that and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's gonna do numbers for sure. I mean, she she's very smart. Uh, when, when it comes to stuff like that as well, but great, like great, great, were, great, great live show charisma. Oh yeah. Uh, were you surprised that that took off in the way that it did? No, nah, cause I think if, if you are consistent with anything and if you give it, you know, the proper, the proper platform uh, and you're talented enough and you believe in it enough, I think you can make anything take off. Um, I think I am a little surprised the lengths it went to like in, and I'm not saying it was like a crazy like pop culture movement or anything, but like I remember Chris Brown like put videos of me dancing, of me doing it on his story. Um, like an NFL player did it. Um, like a bunch of rappers like posted videos of yeah. me doing it. It went out like really viral on like meme pages and got like millions of likes. Like I think I'm surprised that it went to those lengths. But in wrestling, I think I knew what I was doing. I I think I expected it to take off in the wrestling world. I didn't expect it to do so much numbers in the non-wrestling world i feel how aggressively you do it like physic like it's not just like a little soft thing like it's pretty aggressive and i was like okay that yeah yeah that that'll hit i mean there, when... there, there, there's there's a time and place sometimes you do it softly <laughs> sometimes you do it hard sometimes you do it aggressive i mean it's, it's all about the rhythm <laughs> it's, it's like anything else it's not like you don't do the dance the same every time like what it. else 
I mean, you just like the like like in wrestling, like you okay. you 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 have more than one speed. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. you're not you're not gonna start a match going a million miles an hour. Like when you do the dance, you gotta warm it up a little bit, depending on the situation. I mean, there there could be times it could be like full on Don Fry Takayama style, sure. like aggressively dancing, I guess. But uh, when when other wrestlers are using that like for heat on you, is it ever a situation where you like you're like I'm ready to move on to something else, or is it something that you're proud of? Like it's it's one of those things where, obviously, it's very popular, but it's something I'm definitely proud of. But I think it's a chapter that you know I've closed. Daniel Garcia, have you ever seen on YouTube where people shoot hard on one another? Like our video shoots. I mean, not him. He sucks. But yeah, kind of like that. Like. Enzo Amore Barry oh, Simon yeah, yeah, Gotch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel like any wrestling video that you ever watch, the one recommended thing is going to be Enzo that. Amore Barry Simon Gotch or Simon Gotch talks about. It's always like a shoot from one of them. Oh, I tried to game the system. When I interviewed Matt Raywold, I got Aiden English on Enzo Amore burying Simon, Simon Gotch as my headline. But I like to do something a little bit different shooting softly where i ask you to say nice things about people that you have worked with in the past now i'm not going to ask you to say anything nice about mjf there's nothing nice to say about him but there are some people that i, I look at and i go okay maybe he's got something nice to say here's one out of no i can tell you this a few years ago i never expected to see daniel garcia against fred rosser in new japan you have the new japan strong jacket on any thoughts on fred rosser um reinvented yeah i i think that is is this, that like, is, a, is, this like, is this like a one word thing you can do one word or you can say more it's it's up to you one word is cool let's do one word okay cool. there we go josh woods strong he is he's a big beefy son of a bitch that yeah. guy he really is trey miguel uh athletic there you go Very athletic. You, you smile a little bit there is there some heat there no not at all i was trying to i always it. i always worry that i'll land on somebody that somebody has heat with and i'll like accidentally like create more beef in nah. between them i don't got heat with nobody so we're good. okay shane taylor that's that's a good one you all had a great match on collision intense he is super intense Takeshita, a guy that you wrestled before AEW as well, before he got to AEW as well. Best. He's so good, man. Best. He's like, he's so very clearly like, like we can look at people like yourself and Takeshita and it's like, they're so very clearly like going to be the guys that we're watching for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, you know, Lord willing. He's, he's just incredible. He's the best. That, that's all I can say. He's, he's the literally the best. That's it. Here's another one that is uh, definitely got buzz on the Indies. Kevin Blackwood. Underrated. There you go. There you go. Daniel Garcia, you're facing MJF this weekend. When you leave the ring after AEW All Out, what do you think people will be talking about in regards to that match? Oof. I think people are going to see a level of violence, a level of intensity, and with that, a level of passion that is very rare in wrestling. And I think that's what will be talked about the most after this, I hope. I hope that's what they're focused on. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, man, a couple of my favorite performers to watch in the ring. Yourself, MJF. I had mentioned this before we, we got disconnected. Uh, it feels like MJF has to remind people he can wrestle like once a mm -hmm. year. Like people just forget. I don't feel like you've forgotten. I think you're very aware of what it is you're going in the ring with. But also when you're, you're facing a guy like that who does, I mean, listen, you, you'd mentioned it before. Some of the best uh, that to ever do it are wrestlers and sports entertainers. I think he exemplifies that uh, very well, as do you. How do you. How do you see this? Do you think that people will look at this match and say, 
wrestlers or sports entertainers? I don't think they're going to be thinking about that at all. I think they're going to be, like I said, focused on, wow, we just witnessed something that was violent and chaotic and disgusting in the very best way. I, I think that's what people are going to be focused on. I don't think somebody's going to watch this match and think, um, was this a pro wrestler or a sports entertainer? I don't think they're going to be thinking about that. I think they're going to be focused on the brutality that they've, that they're that they going to see. You got to make I'm, it bleed, I, and, yeah? I'm going to try my hardest. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that would be I'm I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to hit him in the face as hard as I can until he busts open and pops. I mean, if I, hypothetically speaking, if I were MJF, I would go into this match expecting – to bleed you do not strike me as the type of person that you know if for some reason i would make you bleed that it wouldn't be coming back at some point like i said i'm gonna try my hardest i'm gonna see what i like i I can't promise that i'm gonna make somebody bleed sometimes it just doesn't work out but i'm going to i'm gonna try my hardest to make him bleed i'm gonna do everything in my power to you know he tasted my blood last night i kind of i kind of want to see what his tastes like too it's kind of gross man Hey, it's a, it's a gross business. It is. It is. It is. Uh, as we wrap up AW All Out this weekend in Chicago, what is one thing you think the world should know about Daniel Garcia? And the world doesn't know a ton about Daniel Garcia. You're you're very you're a very private man. Yeah, I mean, I I think everything that I want known is already known. Fair, fair. That's a good headline right there. Everything that I want known is known. Sorry. Daniel Garcia, thank you so much. AEW All Out this weekend. MJF versus Daniel Garcia. A ton of great stuff on this show as well. Until next time, my friends, we're out. There's no sponsor that I use more while I'm awake than NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Man, this is like the Swiss Army knife, the multi-tool of applications. It does a little bit of everything. You always get a great deal at NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You can listen to your favorites abroad. You can shield your data from snoops and criminals, protect yourself on public Wi-Fi, and it works on all your devices and operating systems. It doesn't end there. Change your virtual location and then get pay-per-views at a much more affordable price, TV services at a much more affordable price. You got a password manager, a file encryption tool, threat protections, and on top of that, 24 seven tech support. So if for some reason you don't know exactly how it works, nordvpn.com slash FIFA will help you learn how to do it. Check it out, nordvpn.com slash Fightful.